Hey you guys, it's Donna from FedUpWithFatigue.com and today I'm going to be talking about weird symptoms. So specifically these are weird, kind of odd, unusual symptoms that I've experienced as someone who lives with fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, and a condition called intracranial hypertension. And I just thought this would be kind of an interesting and maybe a little bit of a fun video to do to stimulate conversation among others who have these conditions to find out do they have similar symptoms or maybe they can share their own weird symptoms. And I really would love it if uh, you guys, either in the um, comments on YouTube under this video or in the comment section of my blog, would share your own weird symptoms or if, some of, or if you have some of the um, weird symptoms that I'm getting ready to share here. Now, I've got a list on my computer, so I'm gonna kinda go through these. The first one is having body hair that grows extremely slowly. So prior to my fibromyalgia diagnosis, I had to shave my legs at least once or twice a week. And if I tried to stretch it beyond a week, my legs would get like super itchy and the tiny little hairs would feel like they were pulling on the, my uh, pants legs and such. I just, I couldn't stand that sensation. But the past few years, I've noticed I'm only shaving my legs maybe once a month, once every six weeks. So I guess if there's like benefit to being chronically ill, that would be a benefit, right? Not having to shave your legs as often and particularly since, you know, doing a lot of bending and that kind of thing can be a little painful or fibro. So I can look at that as kind of a, a benefit. I have no idea why this is happening. I do speculate that maybe it's because my body is fighting so many different infections. Uh, that maybe my body is redirecting resources away from body activities that aren't as necessary to areas where my resources are needed more because like having hair on your legs isn't really essential or necessary in our modern day times, right? Because we don't rely on that to keep us warm, that kind of thing. But again, that's just speculation. The uh, second thing on my list is kind of related. It's related to toenails that are growing extremely slowly. So, um, same issue as the body hair. I'm only uh, cutting my toenails like maybe once every two or three months. Um, what's interesting though is my uh, fingernails are still growing about the same. So it's only the toenails are affected. And again, I'm just speculating that maybe it's my body's way of redirecting resources because toenails just aren't really mandatory or necessity, right? Um, okay, third thing on the list is pain that feels like a bee or wasp is stinging you. And I mean like literally it feels like a bee or wasp is stinging you. Now I don't have this uh, symptom as often as I used to earlier in my, particularly my fiber diagnosis. Um, very early on in that around probably 2014 to about 2017, the bee sting pain would be something that would kind of come and go. I haven't experienced it as much as I'm getting further along in my um, treating the Lyme and fibro. But um, you know, when it was happening, it's it's very painful. You know, obviously I would look down. What the hell is going on? There's nothing there that could be stinging me. It literally was just being manifested by my brain up here for some reason. So the next thing on my list is uh, the feeling of having bugs crawling on your skin. And I, I know probably a lot of you guys have this sensation. This is one that it's pretty common for me to the point where when I had that sensation, like I generally like don't even look or pay attention to it. And kind of a funny story, last week I was uh, cooking breakfast and I noticed kind of something that felt like it was crawling up my arm but again, that happens to me so frequently that I don't even pay attention to it anymore. So I just went on about my business, making my breakfast. Then I finally sat down to eat my breakfast and I felt a much stronger sensation on my arm. And so that time I was like, okay, is there literally something crawling on me? So like I, I pull off my long sleeve sweatshirt, pull my sleeve up and I had a spider that had been crawling on me. I have no idea how long he had been there um, I was a good person though. I did freak out a little bit, but I was a good person and I got him trapped in a little Tupperware container and, you know, put him outside. So hopefully he lived another day, but, um, 
you know, that was one that normally I just completely ignore those sensations and I actually had something that was on me this time. All right, so the next thing on my list is um, the sensation of your skin feeling like it's sunburnt. And this is another one that I don't have it as often as I used to earlier in my diagnosis. But um, when you have it, yeah, it's very uncomfortable. It, you, it's uncomfortable for your clothing to touch your skin. And I would often get it like on the on my hip, like on the sides of my thighs, sometimes on my um, butt cheeks. And again, you know, just very uncomfortable. We didn't want cloth touching it. There really was kind of difficult to find anything that would um, help alleviate that. And it's one of those things that I'm glad that I don't get it as often as I used to. Uh, next thing on the list is random cold spots on the body. So, this is one that I deal with pretty regularly still. Like for example, last week I had a sensation of a cold spot right here on my hand. Now there's nothing here, but it would feel like a little piece of ice or have you ever used like those um, spray cans? Um, there's like, there, it's like a wart remover and basically it, it freezes your wart and that little sensation of the, um, chemical hitting the ward and freezing it, that's what that felt like. And again, I have no idea why it happens, what causes it, it moves around, random. You know, I might have it one day, not have it for a few weeks, and then it comes back. It's just very weird and random. Uh, the next one on my list is sweaty legs. So this is one that's manifested pretty recently in the last couple of months. So like generally when you sweat, like there's certain areas of your body you sweat at most first, right? So like your underarms, your groin area, your feet, your butt crack, like maybe under your hair, for instance. But um, pretty regularly these days, my legs sweat and other areas of my body are not sweating. I just think that's, that's very weird. Like why is my legs sweating, right? Uh, next thing on the list is getting car sick even when I'm the person that's driving. So I've had two episodes since my fibromyalgia diagnosis where I had periods of time where I would get motion sickness every single time I got in a car and rode with someone, no matter what. And I would also get motion sickness about half the time when I would get into my own car and drive. Have no idea why this happened. Uh, the first episode I had lasted for two or three months. I actually saw a couple of different ear, nose, and throat doctors because they were thinking maybe there was something going on with my inner ear. Uh, they could never figure out what was going on, what was causing it. I had a, the second episode happen like within the last six months and thankfully that one only lasted like maybe a month. Um, but I would end up having to take Dramamine, um, Dramamine any, any time that I knew I had to get in the car. I mean, I'm talking about even if I was just running like to Wawa that's like five minutes away, I would get sick in the car. I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? Like what can be causing that? Uh, next thing on the list is smelling cigarette smoke when there is none there. Now, this is a symptom that I've been able to narrow down that I think is caused by the condition I mentioned at the beginning of the video called intracranial hypertension. I don't know why it's causing it, but I will smell cigarette smoke 24 seven and there's no smokers around me, no cigarette smoke at all. And it's very odd because I'll smell the cigarette smoke for a couple of weeks, every day for a couple of weeks, 24 seven, then it'll go away for five or six days. Then it'll come back for four days. Then it'll go away for a month. Then it comes back for two weeks. I mean, it's just, it's just so freaking random. Like, and what's causing it? And let me tell you what's the really funny thing about it. So our brains and our bodies are just so amazing. When I had the cigarette smell smoke, I can literally breathe in very deep in my nose, like, and my nose will literally burn like there's cigarette smoke going up my nose. 
I mean, how cool is that? Like, like it's frustrating and it's irritating, obviously, but the fact that like my brain can like completely manifest that entire experience, just, it's like fascinating to me that it can do that. All right, so the next one on my list is brain zaps. And um, these things, like basically it feels sort of like a lightning bolt is going off in your head. So I know that uh, some people that when they come off of uh, some Balto, which is a, an antidepressant and some other antidepressants, they will have s these brain zap kind of situations. Maybe a few months ago, I went through several days where I was having those and it literally, it feels like a shooting pain through your brain or like a lightning bolt going off in your brain. And um, thankfully, I after maybe four or five days of this, and I mean, it's concerning because you're like, why am I having a stroke? Is it an aneurysm? Like, am I getting ready to die? I mean, it's very like, it's very alarming when it when those happen, right? Um, and so I, after about f four or five days of having that on and off, I did run it past my doctor, and he um, had said, uh, "Go get you some a supplement called L-theanine. It's uh, L-theanine is a natural uh, substance that uh, is found in like green tea and some other some other types of foods, and um, basically it it calms your brain down and sure enough I took you know the L-theanine started that and the brain zaps went away so whatever the L-theanine did it fixed that problem um, so I was really glad of that actually because again that's probably out of everything on this list that one was probably the most alarming one because you do wonder are you having a stroke or aneurysm or something very alarming and the uh, last one on my list is feeling stoned when you have not used cannabis. So I am a medical marijuana user, so I'm very familiar with what happens when you take in THC. And there will be times during the day when I will get that feeling and I have not used any cannabis for many, 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 many hours. So it doesn't make sense. Don't know what causes it. Don't know why my body's doing it, but it will create that sensation. Um, and I'm fortunate that it's not ever happened, you know, where I'm out and about because, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of need to sit down and let it pass, right? Um, so that is, that's everything on my list. And uh, again, I'd love if you guys would share your own weird symptoms or tell me if some of the symptoms that I've shared or things that you've experienced, um, either in the comments on YouTube or in the comments on my blog. And um, I hope you guys are doing okay. And as well as possible, giving all of the weird, crazy stuff that's going on in the world today. And uh, see you guys on my next video. Bye.